Alan Cosno. I'm a member of Midwest Fruit Explorers. We call ourselves Midfex. We're a hobby group. We love to grow fruit, mostly in backyards. Uh, we do it for fun. We try to keep the old varieties from going into extinction, and we like to check out all the new varieties, too. Uh, one of the things that's important to us is learning how to graft so that we can choose all the varieties we want because many of them are not available commercially. And I'm going to show the summer grafting techniques known as chip budding and tea budding. Uh, these are not the techniques that are used in the winter where you splice wood together, but this is what we're going to do now the second week in August. All right, I'm out in my little backyard orchard now, and we're going to take a piece of the wood that we're going to use from the desired tree to graft onto another tree. Uh, what we're looking for is wood that has grown during this, this current summer um, that is roughly pencil in diameter and preferably with little buds in the leaf axles right there. Those are what is going to become the new tree. I'm going to cut that off now. This is the kind of wood we want and this whole thing is called a bud stick. There are Oh, there is a bud in each leaf axle, and each one of those could become something that we can graft on. Uh, even if you don't see the little baby leaf bud in there, it's there. Even if it's too small to see, it's there. The good stuff, the good buds, are toward the more mature part that grew during the year. I'm going to, and, and this wood is a little more mature and easy to work with, so I don't need all this either. Now I'm going, to be, I'm going to be bud grafting right on a table on the other side of the house. But often you have to transport this and you don't want it to dry out by losing moisture through the leaves. So you cut off the leaf blades but you leave these petioles, the, the leaf stalks, on. The reason is that these are going to help you manipulate the, the bud at the base sort of like a handle. This is what a bud stick is. We could get, what, a dozen, a dozen or more grafts out of this if we wanted to. Uh, I'm going to be showing this on a rootstock that I've had growing in a pot uh, because it's easy to show. What I will, what, what also can be done is a root, grafting onto a rootstock that's already in the ground or we can use a branch of an existing tree to graft onto. But I'm going to use this potted rootstock. And I'm going to graft a bud from this bud stick that we cut previously and we're going to show tea budding first. Tea budding is the good old standard. It's been used for hundreds of years. Uh, it does however depend on the rootstock having had enough water in the last week that the bark slips, which really means separates, away from the wood in order to insert our bud. So let's show, first we're going to prepare the tea in the rootstock and then we're going to put the bud in. And it's very simple. We're going to cut a T like this, one down, cutting through the bark. Then we're going to separate this bark from the wood. And this is separating well. Sometimes it opens on the bottom right there. It's okay. You can see why this would require young wood. Otherwise, the bark would be too hard to manipulate. Opening this up. Then we're going to cut a bud from this stick. We start up. We cut past it. I am actually cutting through wood now. And we cut it off. It'll fall. And now it can be seen why we like to keep that leaf stalk on, that petiole, because it's a real good handle to work with. And since this is open, we're going to insert this. Getting as much contact as we can, pushing it all the way in. 
And now it has to be fastened in. Many things have been used in the past. Uh, the, in the old days, they used beeswax and clay, and they tied it with vine tendrils. Now we have this wonderful product called parafilm, which will let air in and out, but will have enough elasticity to keep the layers bound together, but will also prevent sun scald and will also prevent loss of moisture. So we're just going to go around and around, sort of tight. Some grafters cover over everything. Some, like me, like to leave the little tiny bud in the axle exposed. And the only other thing we're going to do is cut off some of this petiole. Now, as, as contrary as it seems, if the petiole does die and fall off in about 10 days, that's a good sign. If it doesn't die and fall off, it probably means your graft isn't taking, your bud is not alive in there. But that's all of it. There are some grafters who will leave, these, leave this on all winter. This will almost certainly not grow until next spring. This will remain dormant. If things go well, all you'll see is that in 10 days or two weeks, this petiole will turn black and fall off, and then it just sits there all winter. Some grafters leave the parafilm on all winter, some take it off in about two weeks. I have generally felt that you've gotten all the good you're going to get out of it in two to three weeks. Now we're going to do a similar technique called chip budding. It is a little more difficult, but probably has a higher incidence of takes. An advantage to chip budding is that it doesn't depend on the slipping, that is the separating of the bark. It can be done much earlier in the summer before any bark would be expected to separate. We'll start by preparing a bed in the rootstock. Let's see if we can't find a better place to show. We will cut at a 45 degree angle, we're going to cut we're going to cut a notch in the rootstock, which is going to hold our chip hood. Then, above it, we're going to cut a narrow bed just through the bark, where we're going to get the apposition of the bud with the rootstock, like that. And that is the bed that we cut. The growth and the taking comes from this thin green layer around here, which is the cambium, which are the living cells of the, of the rootstock. And we're going to cut to match out of this bud stick. It is much preferable if the width of the bud, the chip you cut for the bud stick, is equal to that so that you have cambium matching on two sides. If you can't pull that off, then you have to only make one side match, but you don't put it in the middle. Now I'm going to cut my my chip. I'm going to just cut this here so that when it falls, it falls cleanly. Now I'm going to cut my chip. Very much we're hoping to be able to match the bed we made on the rootstock. This will fall. This little notch we've cut here is going to hold our stock while we wrap it. I'm sorry, it's going to hold our chip while we wrap it. It's a trifle narrow on this side, so I'm going to make very, very sure that I have a match on one side, and then I'm going to cut off the excess. And we have this fitting into the bed. Good match on one side. 
Most of this petiole I don't need anymore and I'm going to take it off. And we're going to get out the same parafilm. Take our parafilm and do the same that we did with the other one. It's a little bit elastic. And we stretch as we go. Cover it all or not. Different grafters do different. This one I'm going to cover completely. And it sticks to itself. Now I should explain that with tea budding, the tea remains dormant all winter. And in the spring, this was the tea bud we put on, in the spring, if this is alive, we will cut this root stalk off right here and throw the top away, and this will grow up to become the trunk of the new tree. With the chip, we will take that off in a few weeks, and sometimes it begins to grow even the same season. But these are the two techniques, chipping, uh, tea budding, and chip budding. So now we've shown the summer chip budding and tea budding technique. That's in addition to the late winter, early spring dormant whip and tongue wood grafting that we show that we have formal courses for at our midfex uh, grafting workshops. This technique actually is done better, it is better to use for stone fruits, apricot, peach, etc., uh, and for roses that, uh, than the winter wood whip and tongue technique. However, this can be done very nicely on apple, pear, or just about anything else as well. Thank you.